So for three years running, I named this model right here as my personal pick for my favorite couple's camper, and it just got better. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Vicious RV with, uh, again, an RV that I am personally very sweet on. And I have never described any RV as perfect, but for me, this one is threatening. It's really threatening to achieve that title. This is the Keystone Cougar 22 MLS. And what they've done here is a bunch of little things and one major thing, they have elevated this even further for me. So first of all, they've done things like they've enhanced the solar packages a little bit. It used to be 200, 400, 600. Now you can add 10% more to every one of those to get you even more juice if you decide, you know, you do want either battery tending or if you want to be able to do some, uh, you know, light duty running the air conditioner off grid uh, for a limited time kind of stuff. This RV has has that kind of capacity. This is also a kind of rare find in the world of travel trailers with a, uh, uh, a warranty allowance for full-time RVing. It also has zero to 110 degree uh, weather allowances, which is really aggressive, especially in the world of travel trailers. Frankly, that's better than most fifth wheels. Um, the, uh, you know, not only is the underbelly heated, but they have holding tank heaters standard. You've got Goodyear tires on these. It's ready for TPMS. Uh, all color-coded wiring with the, the better in-command kind of uh, control center on here. All those things I really like about it but something they did this year is they changed the slide out it, they went through a major engineering update on this one even though the RV doesn't look totally different they put a lot of effort into it and they have actually updated it to a carpetless floor flush slide before it technically was actually a slide that was like two inches above the floor it kind of floated above the floor and they haven't done that here now. So what that allows for is like a theater or a hide -a bed It also allows for deeper kitchen countertops, um, more storage in the kitchen, which is something this model always did great. And the road mode travel access on this is about as good as you could ever hope to get out of any travel trailer. It falls well within the realm of a lot of half ton towability and so many other good features on this one. Really, there's only two potential downsides for some folks on this one. We're gonna hit those on the way, but it has to do with basically the bedroom and the bathroom, but in a small RV like this, I think personally, they absolutely crush it. And I, I can't wait to see what you think about her. So if you walk in the RV, you tilt your head to the left, which is typically what most people do. This is basically what you're gonna see right here. And what, what's really cool about this one, like you see it has a sofa and a dinette and a bed. A lot of times when you're in this kind of size and weight range, to get all of that in one RV, you have to go with some kind of Murphy bed arrangement. And that's not what this is. You have a full-time dedicated sofa and a full-time dedicated dinette and a fixed bed that you don't have to wrestle with or put up or down or find some goofy wonky folding mattress or anything like that. Now, again, one of the major updates here is they have gone to a floor matching carpetless uh, slide. And on this floor plan, they've made the slide like a foot deeper. This used to be about a two foot deep Schwintech slide. This is now uh, basically a three foot deep um, full on uh, floor flush super slide in a small camper. Um, you might notice sometimes on the corners, um, the, uh, the carpetless flap does kind of hang up a little bit. That just seems to be a thing that's happening with Keystone, period. Um, but they also don't make their carpetless flap over the slide quite as long as everybody else. But by doing that, by deepening the slide out, what they've done here is they've created deeper um, counter space. They've created deeper storage and we're going to get to see all this open. I love how they put that inverter prepped outlet back there. By the way, as we're going through this RV, anytime you see that yellow sticker on the RV, that's telling us that it's inverter prepped. But if you notice what you're getting here, look how much deeper it is like behind the stove, you know? Um, you, you, you've added about 10, 12 inches of extra depth to the slide. Now, one thing I will tell you, trying to be fair, that might mean that it's a little bit of a forehead bumper uh, up top here. However, overall, they did a good job of making sure like your, your counter space and your stovetop was slid out to the edge of the slide. So you're really not going to have to worry about all that. So overall, I think they did really, really well in here. Um, the walls are six and a half foot tall, but it does also have like a really aggressive uh, barreled ceiling. And what that creates is a big open feeling. And you might notice how this one has just awesome window coverage all around the RV. Like you have pretty 
pretty close to 360 degrees of viewing and your entry door you might notice how the bottom of that window and the entry door is like thicker than the top that's because it does have a privacy shade that pulls from the bottom up built right into this sucker now you have um you know with the the new four flush slide you have either a theater seat or a, a new hide-a-bed option that just wasn't there before. And over here, you still have either the booth dinette that we're looking at with that handy, handy clutter cutter shoe garage over there. Or you could swap that out for a, a table and four freestanding chairs. If they, uh, I actually really like the table and chairs option in this. One thing I think would just really, really crank it up another notch, because the survey is great, but I still think there's little things they could do to make it better. Um... If the freestanding table option, if the table could fold down flat against the wall or pivot sideways to be used like a, uh, a campsite bar looking straight out that window, oh my gosh, I just think that would be just so awesome and multifunctional. What's your concept on that? What do you think about that? Anyway, so the TV is up a little high. Um, Cougar has actually recently started in some of their bigger fifth wheels using a mounting bracket that uh, will allow that um, high-mounted TV to actually drop down. And that might mean that it might cover some or all of that window, but it also could allow for better, less neck-wrecking entertainment uh, viewing. And you may also notice how that is a um, what's called a uh, dream dinette system, where it's just a gas-threaded, easy-up-down kind of uh, table system right there. But when you do recline in the theater seat, uh, it is pretty nice actually you are basically looking at the television um and the tv can swing out and pivot around like we're going to see later so if you want to uh you know be able to view it from different areas of the rv you can you know if you want to watch a little tv in bed at night or over in the kitchen by the way this is your fbi listening device um also known as i'm joking of course this is a thermistor that's your temperature sensor uh by the way and right by the door you have your in-command touchscreen panel but you still have just a light switch back here. So by the door, you have a switch for the lights. In the back of the RV, you just have a switch for the lights. You don't necessarily have to go Bluetooth beep boop. And is it me? Or is that a much bigger window than they had last year? I do not recall this being quite that large. And I'm always a sucker. Whenever we get these like rear corner kitchens with lots of windows, my grandmother's house still to this day has that same kind of like in the, the rear corner of her kitchen, just has big time window coverage. And it just, it takes me back. It hits me right in the member berries, basically. <laughs> Now, down below here, you've got a larger oven. That's a really cool Cougar thing. Uh, they're not exclusive. Like, Rockwood's very good about that, but very few brands use a little bit bigger oven. The cool thing about the bigger oven is that it heats more evenly. It's not as susceptible to hot, cold spots, so your stuff actually does tend to bake better. Again, that in-command system over here. One of the other things that's neat about this, you can just tap the screen and then tap your lights on and off. You don't have to go. You don't even have to unlock the thing or... You could, uh, of course, just, you know, sync your phone to it. Now, wrapping our way around the front, once again, some sweet window coverage all around this RV, which also allows for some really good cross-breeze airflow, whether it's going across the bed or from the dining over here to your sofa area, you've got some really good breeze potential. Now, I don't use a wide-angle lens, so apologies. Sometimes I know it looks like I'm right on top of stuff, but I, I, I don't like to use a liar, liar, pants on fire camera lens. That's just not quite my thing, you know. Uh, 15,000 BTU air conditioner up top here. And that does have a residential uh, filter system on it. So, like, you can actually just get on Amazon and, and have cleaner air in your camper, which is kind of nice. I know some people are more sensitive to various allergens. You might hear it in my voice right now. I'm actually fighting off a little bit of a, like, nose cold myself currently. So, uh, a little bit better air filtration certainly wouldn't offend me. Now, I like to share fair information, good and bad. With the way that they've standardized their front end, that side of the bed is not very walk around because that's where your water heater is located that's why there's that big kind of like carpeted hutch right there and uh beside the bed i would personally prefer it if these side stands had drawers instead of an elephant enema pocket where it looks like you got to go elbow deep up in there up in there to try to get to anything that's not my personal preference now remember i was talking about light switches you see household and you see usb plugs right there but you see also a light switch just like we saw back in the kitchen you can lay in bed and turn off all your cabin lights with a flick of a switch or turn them on in the morning whatever you want to do so there's a lot of nice little convenience factors like that yeah again you really uh it, they use a really nice command system the in command system as it were um but you don't necessarily you're not like stuck with it you don't have to deal with that all the time you know and again 
giving us great campsite viewing coverage over here in a small RV is sometimes a pretty tall order. And I think they've done great. Right by the door too. So you don't end up with this big cloud of gnats by the entry door. This is just a motion sensitive light so that when you open the door, it'll turn on. And then of course, if you're rolling around in bed at night, you don't want the light to pick you up. You can turn the motion function off on that as well. Nothing like rolling over in the middle of the night and having the light go, hey, what's up, buddy? You know, and that'll, that, that just sucks. <laughs> the bed, by the way, from the factory, and the factory only does this, is a 70 by 80 king bed. However, if you notice, the mattress hangs over both sides of the bed base fairly uh, far. The bed base is queen sized. So if you don't like this mattress or you want more uh, walk around space or whatever the case, because again, walk around space and this is a little bit limited, just being fair, you can easily slot a 60 by 80 true queen into that. Not a big deal. That's actually very, very easy. And there are blackout privacy shades for every window where they can possibly put them, including that front windshield. And keep in mind, we're looking at an Eastern edition today. The Western edition will not have a front windshield up there. Now, uh, cracking everything open, giving you a deeper dive into stuff. Let's actually start right up here. It is nice that they give us a full cabinet over the bed, but you notice it's not like strutted. It's funny because it's soft clothes and they're using nice magnet catches, really nice hardware, but you do have to hold that up. But it's not a big deal, end of the world. The bed's easy lift. They're pretty thin and pretty sheer, but you do have privacy curtains, which is cool. And if you get the, the booth dinette, which is standard, you're going to have a little extra sleeper space in that shoe garage. If you go with the table and chairs, What's cool is you can get the chairs totally out of the way and you can throw like an air bed on the floor. But keep in mind, uh, the table doesn't fold against the wall. So if like you're laying under the table and you, you hear a raccoon at night, you hear a funky sound. Well, you might go head knocking and banging your head against that thing and waking everybody up. Probably with the four letter words that are going to flow out of your mouth after you do something like that. But hey, here you go. Um, the kitchen, again, has been retouched, kind of redesigned a little bit. I love the giant space under the sink for a big, big wastebasket. Or two, you know? Or maybe you've got a wastebasket and a recycling basket. Like, I, I don't know. Like, uh, I could I could see it working a lot of different ways. Or just having big pots and pans space or something like that is also really awful nice. Um, the uh, refrigerator in this is, that I think it, they're using a 10.4 cubic foot variety of 12-volt compressor fridge. And to help if you're, you know... If you are going to be untethered away from the parks, it does have a factory standard 220 watt solar package and there are bigger solar packages also available. Not to mention, um, all of these are going to be prepped for a, uh, a portable solar panel. So um, even if you get the full factory max solar, you can still expand on that a little bit more, which is kind of cool. Now, I have seen, um, it, by the way, if you're interested in this floor plan, you want to learn more about it. Get on Facebook and look at the Keystone Cougar 22 MLS group. And what a couple people have done is installed slide out drawers right there in the lower section while maintaining just plain uh, storage in the upper section. And personally, I think that's a brilliant idea. I really like it. Now, I mentioned there's there were two things in the RV that I think some people may really not like. First of all, the bed's not private. So that might be a thing that people don't like. If you want a private bed, you can get it. You got to get a little bit bigger, but look at a 25 RDS or 26 RBS Cougar and you can get those things. Um, the other thing is the bathroom. It's kind of funny because a lot of RVs have had a bathroom right next to a kitchen for a lot of years. But there's something about this design where people say, oh, that's terrible. I don't like to crap where I eat. And to that I say fair. Don't buy this RV. No problem. <laughs> now, I don't remember there being that much hip, shoulder, elbow room around this. So I think they've also tweaked around the bathroom a little bit. Um, and I'll, I'll, I have to go back and double check my footage from last year. But I, I used to feel like this bathroom was a little bit tight. And don't get me wrong, it's not the world's biggest bathroom. But I am not hating what I am seeing here and what I'm experiencing sitting in it in person, like an actual, like adult size sink that I can get my hands into there, a place to put a wastebasket in a bathroom. That is about as rare as hen's teeth and fine as frog's hair right there. Uh, the tri-panel um, sliding glass door is also a nice little touch here. And with that aggressively barreled ceiling, one of the cool things here is that I have awesome headroom in that shower, especially considering if you look the shower heads on the inside wall of the, the bathroom. So it's at the tallest part of that ceiling bolt. So it provides you maximum headroom. And if you slide backwards, the skylight is kind of where your head will slip into. 
One of the only other little nitpicks, and I've said this since day one, this piece of wood trim up here with just a couple screw heads staring at me is like the one area in this RV that to me just continually feels like unfinished. They've put so much time, thought, and effort into so many things that that one little area right there, it just feels like it could be touched up, but I could decorate that. Or not me. You don't want me to decorate stuff. You want my wife to decorate stuff. One of the other awesome features of this camper it has just killer road mode access. Because overall, I think this thing gets like, I mean, at worst, I'm going to call it an A- minus for travel access. Even with the dinette here, uh, the, the booth dinette, as it were, not the table and chairs, which is a little bit bulkier. With the slide closed, even with the new deeper slide, you can still very easily walk right through here. Um, it, it has roughly equivalent uh, like width access as like a motorhome with the slide closed, you know. You do have to kind of reach around to get to some of the sink, but the fact is you can get to enough of the sink. You can get to the fridge. You can get to the bed. You can use the dining. We can get to the bathroom. Uh, this, this has like anything and everything I think you could really want for travel accessibility and function without ever opening the slide, which makes it a really, really good fit for what some people call stealth mode camping, where like you pull into the Walmart parking lot or something like that, and you just kind of do a little bit of an overnight without having to open the slide. The fact that you can, you know, even make a meal and sit down and enjoy it at the dinette is a, uh, a hard thing to find in a travel trailer like this. And in terms of towing, 7,200 pounds gross maximum vehicle weight, and a, uh, you know, a, a length nicely under 30 feet. To me, is a really solid recipe for you know a lot of generalized half ton towability now the specific capacity of your half ton may or may not be sufficient here not every single half ton is going to be guaranteed to handle it but late model tow package stuff you're probably going to be fine here um the uh the the nice thing here is like it's small enough you want to get in and out of like any state park or something like that it's not so big you know, like getting it maneuvered getting it parked it still leaves plenty of campsite space if you're you know in in places with other folks not in the middle of nowhere although with some of their solar options, it can be outfitted to be kind of away from the beaten path, which is nice. And I do really like how the uh, the water heater exhaust is over here on the, the driver's side of the RV, or as it's technically known, the poop side of the camper where your sewer hookup's located. Simple little docking station right here. It's nothing major, but uh, hot, cold outside utility shower, you know, your city water hookup. Um, you've also got a portable plug right there for like, your, well, a plug for a portable solar panel. The plug itself is not portable that would be yeah we're using that bluetooth power technology developed by nikola tesla <laughs> um anyway you get the idea if you want to get a portable panel and park in the shade and chase the sun you can definitely do that here upper left there's a red disconnect switch that's not actually a battery disconnect it's a solar disconnect so uh you don't accidentally like nuke your charge controller if the rv like if you're in a situation where you've pulled the battery for winter cold storage not everybody has to worry about that but here in the midwest it's a good idea to pull your battery for winter storage well you don't necessarily want the 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 charge controller getting juiced up by the solar panel so you can kill that there's also a separate hard uh disconnect um, that uh, Keystone has called their Giggy Box, which uh, a lot of brands are now doing a version of something like that. But basically what it does is it truly prevents all parasitic load from eating into your batteries. Although keep in mind, all batteries, even lithiums, do have a rate of passive decay. So like if you fully charge any battery and just leave it there for a while, eventually that battery will discharge itself usually slowly it just kind of depends on which battery type you're looking at so kind of keep all that stuff in mind i like the bigger propane capacity up front here although 20 pounders don't bother me because if it's sunday and i need to you know get a refill it's not too awful hard power tongue jack power awning power corner stabilizers but this one under 30 feet is not quite big enough to accept an auto leveling system so that is not an available option on these uh if you're looking around in here a uh, little bit better view of the uh, in-command center with the faceplate taken off right there. You can also see how it's all color-coded wiring. When Keystone started doing that, they were the first towable manufacturer to do that. Most towable builders still do not do that. Some do, most don't. Um, it, uh, it just provides them better accuracy from the factory level. And my experience has been uh, electrical things related to Keystones have become far more uncommon as a result and vastly easier to diagnose and repair because we can see what we're doing. It's just easier to figure out what wire does what. Again, power stabilizers and the weather package on this uh, is no slouch. 
So it begins with that enclosed underbelly that you can see, but it goes so much further than that. They are using a radiant barrier in the belly, which a lot of manufacturers do. It's actually laminated right to the belly skin. That's also becoming more common. Um, they also have a forced air heated belly, but on top of that, they not only have a, uh, like a, a two inch duct just dumping heat into the belly, every single holding tank has its own individual heat duct also forcing hot air directly on it which is nice, a little more active heating versus passive heating, and every single holding tank has its own tank heater. They also wrap that radiant barrier material like uh, up across the roof, and that's another thing. People wanna talk all the time about the cold camp rating of RVs, but the fact is, vast majority of us, when it is snowflake season, are not camping. Uh, they're, we're not using RVs. We're using them when the sun's shining. That's a really cool thing about Cougars. They're actually rated to 110 degrees, 10% more than most factories even bother trying to achieve. And for a small RV, they do a good job of maximizing the awning space on this one. One of my only nitpicks. I could just do without the outside speakers. I just don't care. Um, Goodyear Endurance Radials, standard on these, 87 mile an hour rated. So they're not quite ready to go back in time on Doc Brown's DeLorean, but pretty darn close. You shouldn't be going that fast with a towable RV anyway. Um, I, I, I don't care what the speed limit is on the road. I don't think you should be towing a trailer that fast. I just my I'll, I'll die on that hill, I guess, instead of dying on the highway with you. Uh, <laughs> the ladder on the back, 250 pound rated, and that will get us up to the fully walkable roof where you can see the uh, 220 watt solar package. That's the base package, 220 watts with a now 30 amp controller instead of 15, so they bulked up there. Um, but their expanded solar packages, you can get 440 watts with a 2000 watt inverter. You can also get uh, a 660 watt package with 3K inverter that even has um, the ability to run the air conditioner, albeit for a limited time. And this is one of the other things that's really handy on this one. It is a single headed sewer monster. You've got but a lone crap cap on ye old sewer outlet. So a lot of times people ask me, you know, hey Josh, if you were gonna get an RV, what would you get? And I actually put a video out last year where I said, you know, under these different circumstances, here's the RV that I would personally gravitate toward. If I had a half ton, it was just me and the wife, that's the one I'd go with right there. That's my personal pick for, uh, you know, under 30 foot couples camper. I still, four years in a row, love this model and I really thought by this point something would knock it off its pedestal in my eyes but I've yet to see something I really like better I've seen some other really really nice things this is always the one though that I, I the gold standard against which I hold all the other things so I'll leave you some links in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability and keep in mind today we're looking at an eastern edition cougar the western editions are slightly different like they don't have that windshield in the front they have um you know, doors to access the storage under the dinette. They have a couple other little tweaks and variances, but this will still give you an idea of about 99% of what the Eastern or Western one's going to be able to offer you. Obviously a little more Eastern tuned right here. And when you're ready, we're ready. We'd love to earn your business, earn your business when you're ready. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.